Well, hello, everyone. It's good to have everyone here. This is, you are joining Unity of Chautauqua, and this evening I have another special guest, and um, if you were with us on Sunday, you've already seen her and been delighted by her energy. This is the Reverend Therese Lee, and she is from Hilton Head, North Carolina. I'm poor baby that you have to be in Hilton Head, but she's with us in Chautauqua this week, and I just... Some of you've already heard this on Sunday, and I really suggest you go back and watch her Sunday lesson. It was so delightful. And that it, you can go to our website and it's unitychq.org. And there you will be led to our YouTube channel. So you can watch her, or you can also see our video on our Facebook page. And um, there is also on our page, I wanna thank all those that have been donating and using either the button on our page or been sending us donations. So uh, so we are going to get started. And I just wanted to say something because I want to repeat this from Sunday, that her personal mission, that Teresa's personal mission is to um, love out loud. And if you've had that privilege of being with her, you know exactly how she is living those words. So I'm going to try, I'm going to open your PowerPoint. Not yet. Oh, not let's, yet. Okay, let's have a, um, okay. an opening prayer. And I'd like for us to close our outer eyes as we're comfortable. And um, I believe it was Anne and Janine when they were doing meditation together, they would use this term about going ever deeper within where each of us meets the God of our own understanding. And so we concentrate on our breathing and we use that technique. I'd like to read to you Charles Fillmore's Invocation. We are now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed spirit. In thy divine wisdom, now erase our mortal limitations and from thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation into our worlds according to thy perfect law. And so tonight we're grateful for your energy that you bring to the ethers that we'll share today together as one in consciousness, we are grateful. Amen. Amen. So we're gonna have some slides as we go through tonight um, as points of references. And so we've prayed, those are the Dalai Lama's hands. If you need to be in touch with me, of course, you know how to do that through um, Barbara, but my phone number is 816 area code 985-9898, Avana Ministries at Gmail. And if you would like this PowerPoint deck, let us know and we'll, Barbara will send it to you as well. So this first slide talks about not only are we being centered in um, what it is, oh, I've got the wrong one up over here. All right, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get centered here for a moment. So it says, God is a frequency that exists within you. Tune in. The greatest thing I believe about unity and learning these unity principles is to understand that God is in us and through and as each of us. And so I believe that this is a great visual of that. Every time we decide to go within, then we get to tune in to the great frequency that is us. I love this drawing. It says, we are infinite spiritual beings having a temporary human experience. Now, what we know before we get into unity is, mm, I'm a body and I'm going to live and then I'm going to die. And the greatest things about the unity teachings, once we understand them and, and beyond unity, of course, are the fact that is the fact that we are spiritual beings and we're having this human experience. And so look at this picture, not only the beautiful colors, but you see the foundation at the bottom is everybody intertwined, growing, like we talk about. So we have things that we transcend and we include, and we transcend and we include, and then we branch out at the top. The tree is such a great visual example of what it is to be us in this world. And it is definitely a blessing 
to um, see the colors. And we could just, you know, we could take this picture apart for a hundred hours and discuss that. But you see the leaves, you see the different entities at top as well. Some have extra um, halos on them or what I would call, um, you know, my tiaras, right? Since it's my <laughs> birthday month. Um, and so a beautiful example of what it is to be intertwined because we are one, we are one. We have five unity principles, right? So I'm wondering, are you willing to live as the Christ consciousness? This can affect people in different ways. They hear the word Christ and they think, oh my God, isn't that Jesus's name? It's not. It's a state of consciousness that Jesus reached in the higher development in the evolution of his consciousness. Right? So when he allowed his ego to be let go and he came from the God thoughts within all the time. Are you willing? That's all we need is just a little willingness. And then what happens is evolution. And the evolution doesn't mean it's always going to be happy. Doesn't mean there's going to always be sunshine. It means there's going to be movement. And therein lies the grace. This next photo is I don't even know who created it, um, but I love it because it says temples and they're called temples for a reason on the side of our head because where is God within us? And the penal gland is in the middle of our head, right? Pine needle, it depends on how you wanna say that. And so I love this visual when, when we forget where God is, we can just hold our heads. We can hold our faces and remember, oh yeah, the two temples on the side of us and God resides within us always and in always. It's a very um, impactful way to remember who we are and who we've come here to be. God doesn't give us what we can handle. God helps us handle what we are given. This is probably the basis of where, and most of all y'all are unity students, so I don't have to talk about theology as much, but when we, when we first get to unity, we, we think things are being done unto us, that there's a God outside of us, and that if God um, is like a puppeteer almost like and, and doing things to us, step on a crack, break your mother's back, whatever it is, swear you're going to be punished. And the breathing part that comes with unity is to understand that the universe happens, energy is around us always and in all ways, and life happens, and we get to figure out how to be part of this, remember, because we're first spiritual beings trying to figure out how to have this human experience. So by being centered, prayed up, whatever that looks like for you, we get to then handle what we're given. And people will say to me, how do you know this works, Therese? All I can say is my life is a living example of that. And so without, without drama, without details, I live it and I am here today to prove it. And so we get to continue to keep moving. Again, that um, number five, which we'll get into, what are the principles? But the fifth one is about action and moving and being alive while we are alive. So your assignment for this week is to go out and buy yourself a treat, whether that's flowers or candy, treat yourself while you're alive. Okay. Everybody do this. Thank you. <laughs> I walk in the charmed circle of God's love and I am divinely irresistible to my highest and best good. I don't know who this picture is of this woman. I just loved the words enough. It, it, it gives me great pause. And I think of Maya Angelou when she explained how it was when she took the class on lessons in truth. And she says, God loves me, Maya Angelou. He who created, the great creator that created the stars and the bees created me. So we walk in a charm circle because life is about a circle on a journey. We are a circle tonight. Wherever you are with Barbara and me here today, we are a circle. And thank you for the internet that allows us to be this together. 
irresistible to our highest and best? Are you willing to have your hands open and your mind open so that you can receive? Therein lies the question. Because remember in unity, we don't tell you what to think. We ask you to think, and then we ask you to think about what it is that you're thinking about and then question it. <laughs> so a circle. Where are your thoughts and where are they leading you? So we have faith. Yeah, well, we think we have faith, right? And then something happens and we think we don't have faith. Well, we have it. It's born in us and it's an innate quality, one of our 12 powers. And so Fillmore's defi definition is it's a deep inner knowing of that which we, is sought and it's already ours for the taking. So it, I used to think early on when I was first in unity, you had to go get it. And I remember saying to my first minister, well, just tell me how to get it. I'll, I'll buy it. And he was like, mm, yeah, your check's no good here, lady, right? So draw it forth up from you and within you. We have scripture that tells us about faith. We have nature that tells us about faith. We have wonderful metaphysical teachings. So the first metaphysical teaching would be the development of the faith faculty already established. And I, use, I do this like it's our mind is here, but we know it lives, it lives in our whole body, right? So it's about understanding that the faith faculty is key to the spiritual realization of each of us. Scripture in Matthew tells us that Jesus said, according to your faith, be it done unto you. Faith cooperates with the creative law. So think of um, Ronnie and think of Janine and their creativity, right? And I think of Jane, and I don't know all of you, but Jane is creative on her farm and, and with her wife and Barbara here and I creating this, this wonderful um, unity of Chautauqua experience. So we have the creativity, we get to then use our faith to make it and bring it forward as we are able then to gift others through that. I didn't know this until I got into unity. I thought having faith was about believing. And it's a, it is, and it's a both and. It's more than that. It's the very substance, Fillmore says, of that which is believed. So that gives us pause, doesn't it? It's like, wait, what? So faith is the very substance of that which is believed. Hmm. So are there some things that maybe are ucky that happen in your life? Okay, but they're not, that's not part of my faith system. They just happen to be part of my thinking system. And sometimes my thinking is thinking. And so then it's ucky. And you can tell I've been talking to grandchildren today, yes? So we get to be mindful of our thoughts so that we can see that they're being outpictured. If we want to have a life that is full of faith and not full of BS, which is a belief system, it's about the beliefs we have that we live from. And that first from is from love and as love, because that's what God is in through and as each of us. So, Anybody been at, ever been at this intersection? <laughs> Not today, I haven't. <laughs> so bewildered and disoriented, what? Why would I choose those? Perplexed and unclear, yes. Confused and unsure, absolutely. Lost, sometimes, right? So this is the human part of us, the humanity that happens and is signed all over in many ways in your life. We get to get to this intersection and go, wait a minute, I'm not sure this is the way I wanna go, right? So we consider that a crisis when we get to, into all of that stuff. Okay, so there's crises happening all over the world. You've watched the news, right? Uh, today, the rabbi that delivered the, new, the, the sermon this morning, the eulogy, whatever we wanna call it, the talk, was so fabulous about can there be the, and I didn't know this. I don't know if you did. He said only once in the Bible does it in the in the new in the Torah does it say love your neighbor. However, it says love a stranger, be kind to a stranger seven times. Thirty six. Thirty six times. 
36. 36 times. I just knew it was a lot. a lot. And it's like, so we had a discussion in our house today. So I'm going to do some further research on that. Once love your neighbor, 36 times love a stranger. So I know I can look at some people I think I know, and I only see strange, right? I'm sure they look at me and think strange as well. So it's not about what you're comfortable with and who you're comfortable with. It's about those that you're not comfortable with and why. So love them. So a time, a crisis defined by Webster is a time of intense difficulty, trouble or danger, a turning point, because we get to choose. I'm going to go beyond this. I'm going to turn it around, as Byron Katie would say. And therein lies the divisive moment, right? That aha moment, as we say, the moment where we might say, oh, I could have had a V8. So I apologize for the lower right-hand corner, if you can see it, where there's a swear word, but it's okay, it's just a swear. Having a crisis of faith is not God testing us. It's the truth trying to emerge and free us. Imagine if we were to ask, what does my soul want me to know that it would have me go through this? And that is, a, that is something that some of you know, Dr. Trevor uh, down in Melbourne, between him and what he told me and what a friend of mine told me in Santa Barbara, I came up with that. What does my soul want me to know that it would have me go through this grief experience is what I was going through with Tom right then, which rocked my world, as you know, and as it rocks everybody's world. And it rocked Jane's world, I know, because she knew him so well. Janine knew him well. Ronnie, all y'all knew him before I did. So what do we do with this? Do we take it on and blame somebody else? Or do we sit for a moment? I said on Sunday that silent and listen have the same exact six letters. We just rearrange them. So can we realize, oh, wait a minute, this isn't something outside of us. This is my soul saying, hey, hey, I'm trying to get your attention, sister. Trying to get your attention. Something needs to be set free. So the last two mornings while I've been here, three mornings I've been here now, and I've had, I wake up. This doesn't happen anywhere else yet. At 3.33 in the morning, I wake up, I'm wide awake and I'm thinking, what is this? And I thought, okay, I don't know, God. And I always hit my phone, right? And you hit the, what's the time? 3.33. So it's a time of development, a time of movement. Of course, I had to look it up and see. Um, so are you aware of what it is that's trying to get your attention? So the five unity principles, there, I'm going to tell you them and then we're going to go through them all. And I didn't make a slide on that. God is, number two is we are, I am. Third is, I think, therefore we create, or I, we create, we, therefore we think. The fourth one is we pray. And the fifth one is we live or we demonstrate. Those are the little versions of them because that's what we teach to the kids. And kids learn by using their fingers. And so I'm calling forth your child today to, to learn as we do that. So the, these were not developed. I'll just give you a little background on these if you don't know. They weren't developed by Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. They were created through the Statements of Faith, where there are 32 of those, that he did create, Fillmore did create. And his um, granddaughter, Connie Fillmore, Bazzi, was pressured, I'll use that word, by the rest of the world Parliament of Religions to say, you got to come up with something. And so she came up with these five I'm going to call them, they're called principles. They're like the tenets of all that those 32 statements put together said. If you'd like a copy of the 32 statements, I have that. You can put it in the chat box. I'll give everything to Barbara. She'll make sure you get it. So God is absolute good. Our first principle, everywhere present, one presence, one power, active in the universe and in our life. So God is good without opposite. God is omnipotent, which is all power, omniscience, all wisdom, omnipresent. There's not a spot where God is not. We can't be separated. And yet when we allow our humanity to intersect our divinity and, and take it over, right, gets up in its grill, so to speak, then what happens is we feel separated. So then we go back to, oh, wait a minute, holding my temples, there is only one. And I am that with God. 
Now I'll often get like, really, Trace? Sounds like you're trying to be God. No, I'm having God express in, through, and as me because I'm not having my ego involved. We have to have an ego if we're going to have a body. That's how humanity happens. And we can keep it in check. Another tree. I'm not sure who created this. It's a stained glass window. God is absolute good everywhere present. Now, as I've evolved in my own unity time, I don't always say, I will say God is absolute, but I love this picture. Good, well, what's the definition of good, right? So I know that in whatever's happening is good for Therese. I'd sometimes have, it takes me a while to get to it, right? So I'm not telling you again what to think. I'm asking you to think about it and enjoy the picture. All right, our second principle is we are, I am. And I didn't put that on that page, I apologize. So human beings, that's you and me, we have a spark of divinity, right? So it doesn't, not just you and I have it, everybody in the whole wide world has it. And I do believe that. I do believe that whether they know of, of Christ or God or anything, it doesn't matter. I also believe, as I study more about Richard Rohr, that the Christ is in all, whether, again, whether you have Jesus as your guy or not. Our essence is of God, right? We've said that in our first principle. So are you willing to realize and accept it and wear it almost like a cloak that we are all that God is? So some of the visual expressions, a wave um, has its being in the ocean, right? So even if you take out a cup of water in the ocean, that's still the ocean in that cup of water. So the wave is not the whole ocean, but it is made up of exactly the same stuff as the ocean and can't be removed from it. So you can do the worst things in the whole world or the greatest things in the whole world. And God says, uh-huh, I love you. Yes. We use in unity Jesus as our great example. So the way shower, the older brother, you've heard all of these different names. I believe there's many of those out there. I don't think it's just Jesus. And someone today said to me, what is unity? And I said, we focus on how Jesus lived their life. This was at our ecumenical house. And they were like, what? I said, how Jesus lived his life. They're like, Oh, okay. And they walked away. You could tell they went and wrote it down, but they didn't know what it meant. And I said, so we don't focus so much about how he died. We focus on how he lives. So as the great example that always gets everybody's attention. Did he swear? Yes. Did he drink? Yes. Did he hang out with Mary Magdalene? Yes. Was she a redhead? Yes. So we love that about him. So demonstrated. So he's demonstrated what is possible, right? In the ebb and flow of life, the oneness with God consciously aligned with the divinity in us. Now, sometimes we forget that, don't we? Like life happens and you think, I don't, I, that wasn't divine or they're not divine. Yes, it was. And yes, they are. We just have to figure out how to get out of our uh, web of, of ego and or humanity. So we are expressions of the divine in human form. I want to be mindful of our time so we can have questions and answers. The next picture how do you like this? These are the windows that I took the other day, but I didn't create this slide. How cool is that? I am a child of God. I am not what I wear, what I drive, or how much I weigh. So I've used this a hundred times in women's, in women's retreats because everybody thinks it's about what this all is. This has nothing to do with it. And I know I'm preaching to the choir, but those two windows are upstairs in the sanctuary in this facility. It's on my Facebook page. So our third principle is we are what we create. We are what we think. So we create our experiences with our thoughts, right? With um, you, know, you can read the screen. I don't need to read the screen to you. Um, and everything in the manifest realm, which means outside of us, somehow began with a thought. Somebody had the thought and it has happened. So today I'm out thinking as I'm walking, I wanna take some great pictures of butterflies on flowers and bees on flowers. Well, guess what I found? 
butterflies on flowers and bees on flowers, of course. Well, it just so happens that Chautauqua also has beautiful gardens. So be mindful of thoughts of that. So our thoughts and our feelings and our beliefs have the power to create our reality. This can also then allow for us to sometimes metaphysicalize or practice metaphysical bypassing or spiritual abuse because, well, I got cancer. Did I cause it? My first question, my answer always is your body has cancer. The truth of who you are does not. I believe we're a student or we're a teacher at all times. So maybe the reason someone has cancer or someone died in my life is so that I can learn something from them. So I never say to somebody, well, maybe, maybe you did. How's your thinking? Or have you prayed lately? No, you just say, I understand that this is what the doctor told you is happening, right? So we get to create in the group mind think, think of what has happened when we think like, um, mm, Many, I'm not, I don't need to tell you specific dates of things that have happened when we have group think. On the spiral, it's called the green meme. Green is in the color where we, that's why you say when you get on an um, airplane, what do they tell you to do with your oxygen mask? Put it on first, then take care of those around you. So our job is to take care of us and our minds so that as we connect with the other minds, we become the one mind. And it's just that one little mind that can make everybody go a little cray cray, right? So be mindful of what it is you're grouping yourself with, right? And, and the energies you share with. We cannot always know the larger meaning of our circumstances, Fillmore says, at the time we experience them. We've all had that. Like what and why am I here? I suggest that we go to the what, Leave the why behind because the what means, oh, something, what now? We talked about that on Sunday. What may seem to be a terrible event in this moment later on turns out to be the highest possible good. I'm not going to tell you it happens immediately. People ask me that all the time about Tom's death. So what's the best thing about it? I'm like, mm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I don't have that answer yet. And I've been told by many a mystic and Dr. Trevor that that's going to happen. Um, by using our free will, we always have the choice to experience good because we get to choose how we're going to react or respond. So it's happened. Byron Katie says, don't fight with it. It's already happened. How do we know? Because it's happening. How do we deal with it now? And I think unity gives us those tools to do that. One of them is prayer. Right? Well, no. oh, let's do this one first. The tiny, I forgot, I forgot how I created my PowerPoint. The tiny C knew that in order to grow, it needed to be dropped in dirt, <sighs> covered in darkness and struggle to reach the light. We're all on this call, very familiar with how much the earth plays a part of our lives and how it really does teach us. And look at that little guy growing through the dirt. And everything here is blossoming because we've had so much rain. So are you willing to do the growing that's necessary? Are you willing to sit with the pain and then realize that this too shall pass? So that's another Sandra King, whoever that is. So number four, one of the ways we get to deal. So God is, we are, we think, all right. So now we have life happening. So now we're gonna get to prayer. Creative thinking that heightens the connection with God mind. What does that mean, Therese? It means we've got God mind in our bodies. Can we get our creative minds, pushing aside the ego, to get aligned with the wisdom that is us, that allows for the healing, the abundance of prosperity thinking, and knowing that everything is for us. Everything is for us. So when I go to Goodwill and give things away, um, they're like, hey, lady, do you want a receipt? I said, no, I'm trying to outgive God. And they laugh. But for me, that's my job every day. And it doesn't always have to be with money, right? It can be with service, like Barbara and I are doing here this week for you all. Affirmative prayer is the way that unity prays. If we start from knowing the truth, right? We're one with God, we are divine, we are spiritual first. We affirm that. 
and it allows then for us to deal with the rest of the world and everything else that's happening with us. And I'm gonna need to get my drink. Time to hydrate. Right, we stay, during COVID, we're staying washed up, prayed up and hydrated. So, affirm, so in, and then with the affirmations, it's not being a bliss ninny, y'all. It's about understanding, yes, I'm going to get that job I want. Yes, I'm going to have the car battery work in my car. Yes, it, I'm going to have a fan when I go to my room tonight because it's hot. So it's seeing it as so. It might take some action as well. So it's not something we do for God when we pray. We do it for ourselves to remind us of our truth, to remind us and Walter Starkey was a great old, long time, long ago, unity minister. And he would write the word remind, R-E, capital M, capital I, capital N, capital D. So can we get back to the God mind within us, no matter what's happening outside of us? Fillmore says, prayer is the activity by which we may directly experience God. And we do that. Janine sang songs on Sunday, and I was all verklumped. And it, because singing is praying twice, right? So we do denials and affirmations. That's a class for another day. We deny something, the power over us, and then we affirm the truth. So that's the process of prayer. And this, I love this. Next slide. Oftentimes, haven't you? People are like, oh, I'm going to pray about that so that happens. Well, why? So I'm going to pray that. Instead of, I'm going to pray that I get the job. How about I'm going to pray so that I can show up to be the best candidate and I get to interview them as well. So it changes me and how it is I show up in the situation. So yesterday, as I was swearing and then praying and then swearing and then praying about my car, I just decided I would go in prayerful and know that they were going to handle it. And it happened. I could have gone in like, you know, the Tasmanian ugly girl, and that would not have helped anything. So did prayer help me, them, me get a new battery? I'm not sure. It helped me be presented. Pre, it helped me present myself in a way that was a, a good customer and uh, willing to wait for the results. So that's how we see that when we pray with people around death and dying. It's not about healing them. It's about healing our minds and the angst over the condition. And therein lies the gift of, of sitting with somebody and knowing as we're peaceful and present to ourselves, then the person sitting next to us, no words may be needed because we're the presence of prayer. So our fifth principle is feed on your faith. So God is, I am, we are, we think we create, we pray. Now we got to do something about it. So we put feet on our faith, so to speak. So understanding all of this is great, but if we don't do anything about it, right? For so long, unity was only about navel gazing. Now we are about putting feet on our faith and this is fabulous. And they apply, the laws of life apply to everybody. Whether we believe in them or not, you know, bidden or not bidden, God is present. And so it's just a matter of us calling our attention to it. Living the truth, Fillmore says, means that we show up in all of our activities, work, play, family, whatever it is, drumming tomorrow night, uh, with a consciousness of what we want to be and have in a way that matters. So we get to align ourselves, and I'm going to have to do a little juggling so I can be with two people I want to be with tomorrow in order to have drumming on Chautauqua Lake at Bemis Point. So I know you'll hold that in prayer with me. Living the truth means that we do the work necessary to remain conscious, which means that we're aware of everything that's happening and that we affirm our oneness. Also, I think this is where the big difference will be in what this rabbi was talking about this morning. I've got to be able to know my divinity unflappably is, was a word that was used in daily word today. So that when I see you, no matter how you show up, I only see your divinity. So that's me doing my work, 
and my job inside me so that I can be the change I want to see in the world. And the last slide, there's two more. God planted a seed of faith in our hearts. So all we had to do was water it and fill it with prayers, fertilize it with the words of God and cultivate it with lots of love. That's what you do for me via Zoom, what Barbara and I are doing this week here at Unity of Chautauqua to touch the lives of people who know and don't know anything about unity or about a relationship with God that makes them feel like they want to keep going and living. And so the last slide says, I'll always take you back. Or I'll take you back always. So it doesn't matter what we've done or haven't done. We start today in this moment grateful. We have principles that help us, guide us along to live who we've come here to be. And we get to decide what that is. Thanks for tuning in with us today. And Barbara's going to take back the Zoom aspect of this. Hey there, everyone. I'm going to stop the recording um, so that we can talk with each other.